So I've made a network monitoring device using a microcontroller and I've named it the Picomon 3000. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, Picomon 3000, let's talk quickly about the name. I did put out a request on social media showing the uh, kind of the pre-production version of the Picomon 3000, asking for some suggestions about the name. This is an amalgamation of different names that people suggested. And so I came up with Picomon 3000, uh, dial 555-1234 to order yours today. Okay, so what is the Picomon 3000? So basically here you can see it's got a set of LEDs, red and green. Red me means something has gone wrong. Green means everything's okay. There's also a heartbeat LED. I wish I had a kind of a proper workshop where I could make plastic or metal plates and etch on the labels. The best I could do was a piece of paper with some paper glue, okay, and a color printer, Picomon 3000. So the idea is it can monitor your network for you. In this case, my local network attached storage, the router to see whether here in the local network I can get through to the point where the router is working, and then the internet, I'm checking some site, uh, google.com for example, on the internet to make sure that I've got internet access and the heartbeat shows, it flashes to show the whole thing hasn't frozen somehow, it is actually actively monitoring those things. I've made it with uh, six LEDs or three things you can compare. Obviously you can extend this, you could put a screen on it. I just wanted something simple that at a glance you could see and check that everything on your network was working okay. So it's built using the Raspberry Pi W and the great thing about the Raspberry Pi W is that it has built in Wi-Fi, which means I've now got network connectivity and I can check to see whether things are working. It can easily run from a battery or it can run from a USB power supply. So it doesn't need to be connected to the PC. So once you've built this thing, you can put it up on a shelf, you can put it on the wall even, wherever you can visibly see it and say, yep, I can see according to my status board here, everything is working okay. Now the LEDs are there to show the status. As I said, you could use a little LCD screen. I've got other videos here on this channel on how to connect different screens to a Raspberry Pi Pico, uh, but it can monitor your local network. As I said, it's checking that my network attached storage is working okay. It can check for internet connectivity and it can check for websites out there on the internet. Okay, once you take the piece of paper away, this is what you've got, a Raspberry Pi Pico W and two uh, breadboards. We're gonna talk about all of it in a moment. Just to mention, this is just a reset button that I've added in, uh, which uh, allows you just to quickly reset the board by pressing that button. So there's the Raspberry Pi uh, Pico W. These here are the LEDs uh, connected across the different parts of the breadboard here. And then these are the resistors uh, that go connect it back around to the uh, negative there. Uh, so you need a resistor for each LED. And these are the wires going from the GPIO pins to each of the LEDs. So basically if you turn on or off uh, a, a GPIO pin, it will power the LED because there's enough, uh, there's enough uh, voltage and amps here on the Raspberry Pi W to do that. And then you go through the resistor and back down to ground. Now here is a pin out of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and so I'm connecting to GPIO 0 and GPIO 1, and then GPIO 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay, so those are the ones I picked uh, to connect those wires to. If you go back to one screen here, you can see, look, here are the ones for 0 and 1, and here's the other bunch that connected down here. There's also this blue wire, which is actually the heartbeat one, and that's connected to GPIO 2. Now you could connect these to whichever GPIOs you want, the ones down here at the bottom, for example, as long as you just change the code, and in the code it's got 0, 1, 2, and then 6, 7, 8, and 9. You just change the numbers respectively to configure it however you have it wired up. So talking of the code, what does the code look like? Well, the main loop, I'm using MicroPython, by the way, very easy to develop with MicroPython. Uh, I've got videos about that here also on this channel. So I use Thony, and then you can just use MicroPython. So there's basically a loop that goes around, there's a sleep here at the end, so we know this loop is taking one second. You toggle that heartbeat LED, which is on GPIO2, so it goes on and off every second, and then you just increment a counter, and when your counter is greater than what interval you want, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 180 seconds, whatever you want, that's when you can go out and ping the different uh, websites to find out what's going on. Test sites by ping, this is the pseudo code, and don't forget to reset the counter, so it only happens every 
30 seconds, 60 seconds or whatever. So test sites by ping, uh, basically this is the more actual one. You provide the host and then two LEDs that you want. One that says this is the LED to turn on when everything's okay. This is the one to turn on when, LED, when something is wrong, LED bad. And so you basically send out the ping to the host. So it could be 192.168.1.21, for example, if that's the static IP address of your uh, of your uh, NAS, or it could be 192.168.1.1 if you want to get your router, or google.com, or androidauthority.com, or youtube.com, whatever it is you're putting in there. And basically, if you sent more than one ping and you receive more than one ping back, then turn the OK LED, LED on, that's uh, the green one, and the red one off, or the other way around. So I didn't write the code for ping itself. I'm using a bit of code that I found on the internet by Sean, with three W's in it. The link is actually linked in the code where I found that, actually in the code uh, that will be in my GitHub reports. We'll talk about that in a second. So this code here defines ping where you specify a host. And then most of the other things are, they have defaults, how many pings you want to send, what the timeout should be, and so on. So you can just say ping the host. Uh, I also supply quiet is equal to true when I use it because I don't want anything printed out uh, on the serial port. And then it returns the number of pings sent and the number of pings received, which are then able to test. So that code is there for you to look at, at as well. So where, as I said, it will all be in my GitHub repo, uh, github.com slash Gary Explains in my examples repos right behind. Don't forget, I've got other ones like Piccolo Basic and Piccolo OS, which I've made, of course, lots of videos about, and uh, Ocean 2, my encryption algorithm. All those are there for you to look at as well. Okay, that's it, the PicoMon 3000. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below if you have any ideas on how to build similar devices that take advantage of the network connectivity of the Pico W or other network-enabled microcontrollers. Do let me know in the comments below. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, hey, stick around, subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>